and welcome back to another podcast episode with Brittany Bundles. You are listening to the Brittany Bundles podcast where we empower people through entrepreneurship. And today, today's topic is going to be centered around distractions. And before I dive into the topic, I want to ask everyone that's listening to this podcast episode a very important question. And the question is, are you allowing distractions to halt your progress? Again, the question is, are you allowing distractions to halt your progress? Many times we allow life events, circumstances, emotions, and more to disrupt and distract us from our business goals. And then we are confused and taken back by our slow to no progression in business. Now I can't speak on everyone's business journey, but I can speak on my business journey along with insight that I've received from working with other entrepreneurs through their business journey as well. And in order for my vision to become reality, I had to sacrifice and dedicate myself to the journey of entrepreneurship. Life still goes on around and throughout business, but learning how to continuously move forward strategically is a skill that I've learned and would like to share with you all today. Again, and I'm saying again because we constantly speak about this on this platform here, that when you are looking at structuring your business, there are certain fundamentals and action steps and behaviors that take a, a huge toll in the overall success and strength of your business. And so learning how to keep moving forward learning how to be able to cut out some things in your life that are not productive, learning how to sacrifice, learning how to dedicate ourselves to what it is we're doing is going to help us continue moving forward and towards reaching those goals. We all have one life here on this earth to live, just one. And I don't know about you all, but every year I have a birthday and I'm like, wow, I can remember when I was in elementary. I can remember when I was in middle school. I can remember when I was in high school. And back in those days, it seemed like forever. It seemed like it would take forever for us to be quote unquote grown. Like it just wouldn't come fast enough. I even remember as a child waiting for Christmas and it seemed like those 12 months, those 12 months, <laughs> would take their time coming, or the 11 months would take its time coming until December actually got here. And once December was here, it seemed like those 24 days would take their sweet time before Christmas actually came. Now that I'm an adult, it seems like the years are going past a lot faster. And it seems like once you're in December, Christmas is literally like the next day. And so what I'm wanting to say with that whole analogy and that whole experience that I just provided is that time doesn't stand still. And if we only have one life on this earth to live, we need to make sure that we are taking advantage of every opportunity so that we can enjoy the fruits of our labor. I don't want to wait until I'm 80 years old to be able to enjoy the fruits of my labor. I don't want to wait until I'm 100 years old in order to enjoy the fruits of my labor. That, that doesn't mean that anyone that's enjoying the fruits of their labor at that age is wrong, or it doesn't mean that I feel like I'm better. All it means is that I have a clear idea of how I want my life to be. I've seen too many of my family members and loved ones have to struggle throughout their entire life and, and not receive a break until they were of older age. And those people that I'm referring to, they sacrificed. They sacrificed what they wanted. They sacrificed their happiness. They sacrificed their money to make sure that everyone in the family was okay and happy. And I love them dearly for that. But I want to be in a position where I'm able to help 
those people in my family and people that aren't even in my family. To be able to reach their level of success sooner and to be able to allow people to know and not even allow but to show people that's a better way of saying it to show people that there's another option there's another option and that it's okay to enjoy your life it's okay to enjoy the fruits of your labor it's okay to not work your entire life before you're able to sit back and take a breather and relax and see all the things that you've done and be able to move forward in a way that's pleasing in God's eyes and also that's pleasing and fulfilling to the gifts that God put inside of you. The old analogy that you have to work your entire life and wait for your happiness or wait for your fulfillment and wait for what it is you've been working for doesn't have to be reality. I talk a lot on this podcast about having the option to choose how you want your life to be. We have an option to choose. We have so many more options today than our parents had before than our great-grandparents had before them, or our grandparents had before them, and our great-grandparents before them, and our great-great-grandparents before them. And you get the point. But we have so many options. We have the ability to really live out what it is we want to do. And so I don't take it in vain. And a lot of times we allow life circumstances and life's issues to distract us from what it is we're wanting to do what it is we're needing to do. So the first thing that I wanna point out in relation to not allowing distractions to halt your progress is prioritize and organize your time. Before we go further into the podcast, I wanna welcome you all back to the Brittany Bundles podcast. Please make sure if you're listening on uh, Anchor that you favorite the podcast. If you're listening on another platform where there is an option to hit the like button, please do so. Also share the episode with a family member or friend that would benefit from hearing this information. We want as many people as we can to tune into the podcast, not just for the podcast sake, but also for the other episodes that we have here on this platform where other entrepreneurs have come on and shared their, their entrepreneurial journey as well as their business information. Other people have sponsored episodes. So let's let's create an, uh, a community of entrepreneurs on this platform here where we all help out each other. We learn from each other. We grow with each other. You can share the podcast episode on social media. You can share it via text. You can share it via email. And you can also turn it up in your vehicle when you are riding with a family member or friend to introduce them to the podcast. So without further ado, we're going to take just a brief break and we'll be right back with the Brittany Bundles podcast. Talk to you all in just a moment. All right. All right. So we're back. Now, the first point that we left off on is prioritize and organize time. So this is very, very essential when you're looking at not allowing distractions to halt your progress. There have been many things that have halted my, my progress and also have um, caused my business to not reach the levels that I set forth for it to reach at that certain time. Perfect example. I love sharing my experiences. And so let's go ahead and get started with doing that. So I recently moved. I talk about it a lot on this podcast as well as on my YouTube channel, Brittany Bundles. And while I was moving, it was a lot. It was a lot going on finding some place to live at, staying in an extended ho uh, stay hotel for a period of time, being a mother, and still having to work, you know, still having to work. And not saying having to work because, um, you know, it's, it's like a sentence that I have to do or, you know, I, I needed the money right then and there. But having to work in order to continuously grow my business and um, having to work in order to provide that sense of fulfillment 
that my type of work provides to me. And so I noticed that I was becoming distracted and I was not prioritizing my time in a way that allowed me to invest time into my business. And so because of that, a lot of things slowed down. My views started to drop. My orders started to slow down. The interactions that I would get via email and DM weren't as much as they typically were. And so when I noticed that this was happening and I got back focused uh, to producing content very strategically and regularly again through my platforms and sales channels, I had to organize and strategize what I was going to do to be able to pick up the momentum again with my business. And that's why I say very often, don't get too comfortable in the position that you're in. It's not like you can't backslide. It's not like you can't fall off. It's not like you have just reached a level of success that can't ever be taken away. I talk a lot about remaining humble in business. And that's one of the reasons that you should remain humble, besides the fact that you should just because it's the right thing to do. But also, if that's not a good enough reason for you, it's really important to remain humble because what you have, you can lose. And I'm reminded of that every day. Again, I don't take anything for granted. So prioritizing and organizing your time, and what that looked like to me was sitting down and even having like family meetings and figuring out what we all needed to do in a day, what we were doing that week, what we had planned that month, that year, and figuring out what all needs to be done and how we can do it together. So there may be a portion of the time that we spend for movie time, family time, and a portion of the day that we spend for homework, portion of the day that we spend cleaning. But there also is a portion that I sectioned out dedicated for my business. And so I had to prioritize what was important and what needed to be done and organize life schedules according to that. So if you're in a position where you're wondering, you know, what do I need to do? I am finding myself getting distracted with this and I'm finding myself getting distracted with that. One common issue that a lot of entrepreneurs deal with is the fact that they're working their nine to five and they're running their business. And although it can be done, at times it's challenging to do because you have deadlines and, and tasks that you need to get done with your nine to five, you have a certain time schedule that you need to adhere to for your nine to five, but then you also have a business a lot of times in its beginning stages, and you also need to be able to invest and devote time and energy into that. And then on top of that, you have a family. So you also have to be present in your family. And then on top of that, you have friends. And then on top of that, you may have other obligations and other groups and other services that you've already committed yourself to. So you can find yourself being distracted and being distracted doesn't mean that you're just sitting on your butt all day watching TV. You can be distracted with things that are very important, distracted with things that you need to get done, such as the nine to five job or such as different events or services that you've already committed to, such as spending time with your family, spending time with your friends. Those are very important things, right? But we still have to find a time and we still have to find a way to organize our life where we're prioritizing what means the most, what matters most. And so even the days where I am finding myself getting wrapped up in things that really aren't going to be that beneficial to my life, to the future of my family, to my business, I have to prioritize what I'm spending my time on because time is so important. And when I, when I was younger, I didn't really understand that because like I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, it seemed like time would take forever. Days were longer, it seemed like. Holidays took a lot longer to come back around. Birthdays took forever. But now that you're grown, now that I'm grown, a lot of us would be able to relate to the fact that time does, definitely does not stand still. And time is something that's not very slow. It continues to go. And sometimes it seems like the, the time is flying past. So prioritize and organizing what we need to do. First, organizing our schedule and then prioritizing what needs to be done and what order is going to help us stay clear of distractions 
and also help us from allowing distractions to halt our progress. The second tip that I have is sacrifice meaningless activities with purposeful ones. So like I mentioned, sometimes you may find yourself getting wrapped up in things that have no value. Wrapped up in things that aren't going to help you nor anyone else in your life get further, progress. And at that point, it would be fair to say, in my opinion, that it's a waste of time. We don't have time to waste. Now, if we've scheduled out time to do a certain task, even if we've scheduled out time for self-care, that's important. Okay, that's fine. But if we're doing things, let's say we're on the phone and we're going on and on about things that really don't matter. I, I, I'm guilty of it. I, I found myself going on and on on a phone call about things that really don't have any meaning in the big grand scheme of things. Or we find ourselves getting wrapped up in series. I'm guilty of that as well. When The Walking Dead came out, uh, or not even when it came out, but when COVID first hit and The Walking Dead was on, I was, I was wrapped up in that show. I mean, it, it would take some, some time for me to actually turn that off. And so I had to prioritize and organize my time in a way that was going to be productive and sacrifice things that were meaningless. Me watching and walking dead at that point in my life was meaningless. It wasn't adding any value to what I was doing. And I'm not saying that you can't watch TV or get into a series. I mean, I still watch series, but I'm prioritizing what needs to be done first. And see, when I was initially watching the walking dead, I wasn't doing that. I just woke up with Walking Dead on my mind, I ate lunch with The Walking Dead on my mind, and I went to bed with that on my mind. And I was not putting my, my all into other activities. And so we want to make sure that we're constantly looking at what we're doing and asking ourselves, is this something that is beneficial? Is this something that's productive? Or is this something that is wasting my time? The third point that I want to point out is identify why we are prolonging our progression. So sometimes, subconsciously, we fill our days up with things that really don't matter. So we're busy all day, but we're not productive. We didn't get anything taken care of, but we've been ripping and running all day. And we continue to do things like that. Even though we know we have a deadline or we have a goal of launching our business in a month, or we have a goal of being able to quit our job and rely on our business in the next year, but we haven't even gotten started with the business or we've gotten started, but we haven't been consistent with it. And so there are people that are subconsciously prolonging their progression. They don't even realize that they're finding every way and everything that they can to stop what it is they need to do. So for example, I remember as a child, um, I, I did not want to clean my room sometimes. I really didn't. I just, I didn't see a need for it. I'm like, mom, why? Why, mom? I know where everything is. Why do I have to clean my room? Mom, I don't want to clean my room. Not tonight, not tonight. And she would say, Brittany, clean your room. Okay, all right. Go ahead and do it before I get in trouble, right? So I would clean my room. But before I cleaned my room, I, I noticed that I was thirsty. Hey, mom, can I come down and get some water? I'm really thirsty. All right, Brittany, come on, but you need to clean up that room. All right, here I come. Yes, ma'am, go get some water. <laughs> come down and get some water, right? Okay, go back upstairs to my room. Oh, mom. Yes, Brittany. Hey, I forgot. My backpack's down there, and I needed to get my homework out of my backpack to look over it before tomorrow because tomorrow it's due Okay, Brittany, come get your backpack, but you need to get started with your cleaning your room. Get back up to my room. Mom, I forgot to call grandma to tell her that I loved her. Remember you said I'm supposed to call grandma? Brittany, look, no more distractions. You need to sit in your room, and I don't want to hear from you until the room is clean. How many of you can relate? I know I'm not the only person reminiscing on a story that's similar to this. Pretty much, I was finding any and every way that I could, anything that I could think of, to prolong me, give me more time so that I wouldn't have to start on a task that I really didn't want to do. So that meant that I forgot that I owed my neighbor 50 cents from lunch money. Okay, well now is the time that I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That's gonna buy me some more time. And if I forgot that I needed to go ahead and clean out the back seat of the car because I left some crumbs in there from McDonald's earlier, mom, hey, let me go clean out the car. 
And I would think of everything that I could until so my mom would call me out on it. Brittany, what are you, you're going to clean this room by the end of the night. You, you have no other option. And so sometimes we do that as adults. We, we, we want to start this business, but we really don't want to. We're nervous about it or we're feeling like we need more than we currently have or we're embarrassed about it for some reason or whatever the case may be. We want to start it, but there's a part of us that, that doesn't want to start it. So we prolong our progression and we haven't identified why it is. So why are we really prolonging our progression? The reason I prolonged cleaning my room was because I didn't want to clean it. So we have to go back to that and have internal understanding with ourselves and, and say, you know, hey, why aren't you wanting to start this business? You have found a million things to take up your time that really have no value, that you really didn't have to do instead of using that time to devote to your business. Why are you prolonging your progression? And only you will know that. But we need to identify that so that we can tackle that head on conquer that and be able to move forward so that we're not allowing any distractions to halt our progression. The fourth tip that I have is commit to what we've set forth to do. This is big. I never want to be someone that says something and doesn't deliver. I know people like that. I know people that will say something and you really can't count on their word because no matter what they say, their actions typically show something else. So they may say something like, okay, well, by this time next year, I'll have, I'll have a, what example can I use? By this time next year, I will have paid off all of my loans and I will have sold my home. And I would have gone ahead and bought the car that you're selling. And so trust me on this when I say that if you allow me to borrow $5,000, you'll have it back because I'm planning on doing this and doing that. And I will have the money from this and that. And so this time next year, you'll be, you'll, you know, you'll have your money if you can just hang with me. And so you believe the person and then that time comes along and you never see your money. And you're like, well, didn't you? So nothing that they said ever happens. It didn't go how they said it was going to go at all. Or you have people that say, um, you know, hey, I'm good for it. You know, go ahead and allow me to have the bundles now. I'm just using bundles as an example. And I'll pay you next week Friday when I get paid. Next week Friday comes and you don't see your payment. Anyways, I never want to be someone that says something and doesn't deliver. I don't want to be someone that's known for just talking and not really backing up what I say with my actions. I want to be someone with integrity. I want to be someone that when, when I say something, you can trust it because you know from my track work record that I'm going to honor what it is I say because what I say is important to me. A lot of times you don't want to do business with people that really don't care about their word, where their word is not their bond. At least I don't. I want to make sure that I'm doing business with people that have integrity. And so one thing that I love to do in business is to commit what I say I'm going to do. And that doesn't mean that you have to commit um, or make commitments every single day to every customer that you're working with or every client. But that means what it, what it sounds like. Whatever I'm saying that I'm going to do, I want to make sure that I'm fulfilling it. And so I have a planner that I write, you know, I write my, my plans down in and I write my goals down in. And so if I have a goal of making this amount of money, I'm not a numbers person strictly. I like to correspond that with the actions. So I'm going to hold myself accountable to fulfilling what it is I set forth to do. So even if I didn't make that amount of money, I'm not saying that I didn't honor what it is I set forth to do because I'm looking at my action steps. So if my action steps leveled up to everything that I had put in my planner and everything that I put under my goals, then I'm holding myself accountable to doing better next, next, next month so that I can you know, work towards reaching those monetary goals. But I'm also happy with myself and patting myself on the back that I was able to stick to what I set forth to do, which were my action steps, my behaviors. So we have to be 
serious with what we tell ourselves. If we have a goal of doing something or if we have a plan of doing something for our best interests, for our business sake, we want to make sure that we're not playing around with that and that we're serious with whatever we do. I want to be serious with whatever I do. And so if I commit to doing something, I want to make sure that I'm fulfilling that. And so no matter what happens in my life, I have a plan. I have a commitment. I have a obligation to continue to drive success for my business, regardless of what's going on around me. That doesn't mean that I'm being blind to what's happening in my life or that I'm putting my business above personal matters, but it means that I'm prioritizing and that I'm strategically moving in a way and planning my day in a way that allots time for me to be able to still do what it is I've committed to doing so that I continue to move forward and I'm not allowing distractions to stop my progression. So commit to what you set forth to do. There are so many entrepreneurs that will say, hey, by this time next month, I'll have a whole business launched and I'll check back with their business and there's nothing launched. They have promoted it to their um, customers and clients. They have posted it on social media. They have participated in pop-up shops where they've advertised their grand opening and then the grand opening day comes and there's nothing there. And so you don't want to be remembered for someone or for a business that does not keep their word. So committing to what we set forth to do is really important, regardless of what's going on around us. And that can happen again, as long as we're strategizing and organizing our life in a way that allots that time and flexibility for us to do so. The last tip that I wanna go over is refuse to allow anything to stop you from reaching and working in your full potential. So God blessed us all with unique gifts, like I say in a lot of different episodes. And I say that because I truly believe that. I truly believe that. There was a time where I felt like I had to work in order to care for my family. And again, I'm gonna say it again, there's nothing wrong with working a nine to five. There's nothing wrong. And when I refer to work, a lot of times I'm referring to the nine to five because that's what I consider work. What I'm doing now, it is work, but it doesn't feel like I'm working because I'm driving in my potential, I'm using my gifts, I'm passionate about it, and I'm fulfilled doing it. And I have flexibility to pick it up when I, when I need to pick it up. I've organized my life in a way where I can pretty much work throughout the day and still have a cutoff time at around five to be completely off with my family. I'm able to do that. And so I refuse to allow anyone to, or anything, to stop me from using the gifts that God blessed me with. God blessed me with gifts. One of my gifts is communication, being able to communicate with different people from different walks of life. He also blessed me with compassion and understanding. So the ability to be able to relate to a lot of people and the ability to be able to have compassion and empathy for one circumstance is a blessing and another gift that God blessed me with. He also blessed me with a business sense. So the ability to see how to take an idea, take a vision, take goals, and map out road steps or map out a road map or paint different uh, uh, trails or steps that can lead myself and other businesses closer to what it is they're wanting to get to. So I have so many different gifts and so do you. God's blessed you with gifts too. There are some people that are really blessed and talented at designing flyers, at creating videos, creating movies, um, marketing, you know, and I'm not going to say I don't have some of those gifts too, but I'm just saying that God puts so, so many things inside of us. And with the gifts that God has blessed me with, I've learned how to monetize them and also how to use them for his glory. And so I don't have that pressure where I'm feeling like I have to go to a nine to five job in order to survive. I trust God because God has allowed me to be able to live the lifestyle that I want to live doing what it is I want to do through the gifts that he blessed me with. And God's faithful in his word. And so I don't allow, again, anyone or anything to stop me from driving in my purpose. I do believe because of the people that I meet, 
while doing what it is I do <laughs> and the information and advice that I'm able to give them. And even here where I'm able to explain the relationships that I've built with people and also the strengthening of my relationship with God, all of that's important and all of that needs to be said and done. And so when I'm getting wrapped up in things that really don't matter, when I'm on the phone for hours talking about issues that really don't matter, when I'm watching reruns of a show, when I can be using that time to invest back into my gifts, my vision, helping another business, family time, times with, with, with friends, Whatever the case may be, when I'm using my time to not strategically invest back into things that are going to benefit myself, someone else, or my family, it's a waste of time in my book. And so I want all of you to refuse to allow anything to stop you from reaching and working in your full potential. The devil also uses distractions. He may not come up to you and just say, hey, I'm the devil, focus on me. But he may do things to throw you off and to get you away from using what it is God created you to do. He may use tactics or people to distract you, issues to distract you from what it is you need to be doing or what it is you should be doing to drive in your full potential. My grandmother always used to say, we don't war in flesh, but a lot of times the battles that we have are spiritual. And so it's a mindset and it's a decision that we have to lock in our minds and in our hearts of what we're going to do to commit to what it is we were placed here to do. And following your heart and allowing your gifts that God blessed you with to be a part of your life. From my experience. Has definitely allowed me. To have a greater respect. And love. For God. Because it shows me. firsthand What God can do. And will do. For me and you. You don't have to be someone. That is perfect in every area in order to be able to have the life that you wanna have. God wants to give you the desires of your heart. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be able to live and, and receive the fruits of your labor. He wants to be able to bless us, but we also have to be able to distinguish between distractions and distinguish between what's purposeful and pointless. And I made a whole podcast episode on this platform titled Purposeful or Pointless. So go and listen to that after this. If you're on YouTube um, listening to this, then head over to Anchor. Download the Anchor app and you'll be able to see all of my episodes. And you can click on Pointless or, or Purposeful. But in that episode, I talked a lot about pointless behaviors and purposeful behaviors. And so you have to decide for yourself. No one's going to just walk up and tell you all the time what you're doing that's purposeful and what you're doing that's pointless. But we're old enough to be able to listen and discern if what we're doing is going to benefit our lives or our business in any way. So ultimately, it's up to us as to what we're going to allow infiltrate the plans and the goals that we have set forth for our life using what it is God put inside of us. There are so many people that are working day to day, not using anything or only using some of their, I don't want to say anything, but only using some of the gifts that God blessed them with. And what you don't use, I've said this before, a lot of times you lose. So it's very imperative that we hold on to what it is we were blessed with. We put it in motion. We have faith in God and we don't allow anyone or anything to distract us from our path and our plan of success. So I really hope that this podcast episode helps someone out there. Like I say in every episode, I don't want the conversation to end. 
If you would like to be a guest on the Brittany Bundles podcast to share your experience, to share your business information, or to share your thoughts about an episode or a certain topic regarding entrepreneurship, be sure to email me at btalks at yahoo.com. That is B-T-A-L-K-S at yahoo.com. Also, please follow me on social media. I am on Facebook at Brittany Bundles. That is Brittany, B-R-I-T-T-N-E-Y, Bundles, B-U-N-D-L-E-S. I'm on YouTube, Brittany Bundles, Twitter, Brittany Bundles, and Instagram, Brittany underscore Bundles. Until next time, I'll talk to you all in the next podcast episode.